So I've just got back from PBM 24 in London. Now this was a three day event looking at all things red light therapy or photobiomodulation as it is more probably known in the scientific community. And that was important because this event was very scientific. We had some of the world's leading researchers in this space. We also had a lot of company founders, a lot of companies involved in this space uh, exhibiting at the event. So I was there, of course. Uh, I also had Bart and Lisa there. Uh, and we, you know, we spent three days checking out the products, talking, having conversations with people in this space, and of course, listening to some of the presentations. So I'm now back in Dubai. I just returned yesterday, but it's still in London. Uh, I believe you're flying out later today. So, but thanks for uh, jumping on this call before you rush off to the airport. I thought we could just have a chat, just sort of go through some of the highlights of the event. I know there's a few things I want to share with the community, uh, with our followers. Um, and I'm keen to uh, tap into, yeah, into your brain because I know you spend a lot of time going to presentations uh, and speaking to you know, some of these researchers. I was focusing more on the product side. So how about we uh, kick things off? You give me, or you give the, the audience a bit of a rundown as to some of the new science maybe to hit the space and uh, any interesting conversations you may have had from the scientific research side of things. It was really interesting. It was so much information and so much, so many presentations that it's almost impossible to remember it all. So I made a lot of pictures of slides and those will be used for the article that we put, will be published like, yeah, in, in probably in the next few days, but at least in, uh, in the next week or so. Um, I was at like eight or nine presentations and some of them took two hours with lots of in-depth information. So it's really different than the stuff that you usually see on the YouTube channel, because these are researchers presenting the work that they may, may have worked for years on. But some of the highlights are, for instance, yeah, I, I uh, went to like three or four uh, speeches or presentations of Michael Hamlin, and he had some very interesting arguments. Uh, number one is, for instance, uh, that's in part with the transcranial uh, photobiomodulation, so the photobiomodulation through the brain, that the blood flow on the scalp, that that may be one of the explanatory me mechanisms of as to why it works and not the penetration through the skull. So he was speculating about that. He was speculating about uh, the dose response curve. So that uh, once you have a, um, that a, a very small dose, you get some effect, a higher dose, you get more effect and a even higher dose there should be a diminishing return, but he argued that there was no very strong evidence for that in, in at least in the human studies. In the rat studies, there are, but humans are different and humans um, respond differently to the light. So that was one of his arguments. Yeah, I can mention more of them. Um, he also had a very interesting argument about sunlight in the mountains that it would work because of the low oxygen concentration instead of the high UV level and or the um, uh, the cold, so that was one of them. One presenter, another presenter, which I don't remember the name of, which is very very bad, but he presented uh, lots of research on eye health, and that's yeah, that's a topic that we just put our video out on on YouTube. So go watch that if you haven't seen it. And more or less, his conclusions were very similar to mine, so I'm pretty happy about that that somebody who spent like two or three years on that topic uh, for developing a company with a, with a device that is specifically made for the eyes that 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 his conclusions were some mostly similar to mine um yeah then there was a talk by uh let me see by Chazot, Paul Chazot, i think on 1070 on 70 nanometers, so anything from like 1067 to 1073 about how that wavelength is really special and different from the others because it is it peaks about uh, the water absorption spectrum of the, of, the, of, of the cells. So it may be that that wavelength has a different biological effect than the others. I'll go in more detail with that and, and read through his papers before I publish the blog post on the on the um, on the summit because yeah, 
technically the summit ended yesterday, so I haven't had a, a chance to look at it. But yeah, all of it was, those are just three things, but there are probably 10 that you can mention or 15. Yeah, there was a lot to unpack. I, I mean, I, it was unfortunate because I went into this thinking, yeah, I'll focus on the product and the, the networking relationships, learning more about products in the space and uh, let you tap into the presentations hoping that later on I would catch up on all of those presentations. Um, so when I found out they weren't recorded, uh, it was, yeah, it was a bit unfortunate and it meant that there was a lot of amazing content that, yeah, I, I can't, um, I won't be able to listen to. Um, so that is a slight frustration, I guess, but the good thing is, yeah, you, you did attend so many and we all, but will be producing, uh, an article, which will go over, uh, that will go up at lighttherapyinsiders.com. So links are all down below. Be sure to jump on that, uh, mailing list, by the way, because not only will you be notified when that goes live, uh, but does a really good job sending out regular content on that side, like really, really good content. So be sure to check out the blog and the newsletter. Um, and of course on the YouTube channel, that's where we'll be publishing a lot of the interviews that we're going to talk about later on. So were there any, any standout presentations? Just, I mean, if you could pick one as a favorite or, or something that was really fascinating, you know, like, wow, I never thought of that or wow, that was a really entertaining presentation. Yeah, there's one that he, that I haven't even mentioned to you, which is uh, a researcher here from England, I think. He's, his name is uh, Stephen Parker. He works as a researcher. He works in a clinic and patients came to him and they kept asking him, about, ah, that's red light therapy, that's red light therapy. So uh, he was like, oh, m m maybe I'm not sure whether I should use it. Maybe I should recommend it to my patients to use at home. So he went on Amazon and he ordered five torches. Um, well which had like good reviews, right? And then he tested them uh, in the same way Alex did, but then maybe maybe even more in depth. Uh, he's also published that, I think. So uh, yeah, I should be able to find it and put it into the article later on. But th yeah, there were all sorts of problems <laughs> with these starches. Like some had, some of them had like very high power readings, but then after you use it for, an, uh, for like 30 minutes or an hour, the device would overheat and then the power would drop off. With some of the devices, the power would also drop off once you use it for after two or three months. So uh, the, really? the device deteriorated over time. Uh, yeah, and there were some uh, some other issues that I know. Yeah, I've written them down in the notes, but it's uh, pretty crazy actually. So, and then he went on to say, um, if a patient asked me whether whether they they should use it at home, he could he couldn't recommend it. Literally not because it would be a medical liability for him and he would be liable if anything went wrong. And because these devices were somewhat unpredictable, uh, yeah, he said, uh, I'm not going to burn my hands on it. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate in that regard because PBM red light therapy is still, it's not mainstream, is it? It's still like, I mean, especially in the infrared light, it's invisible. It's like, how can, I, I can't even see this thing. What, what's it going to do? How's it going to help? So there's a lot of uh, skepticism when people go into it. And then because it hasn't been totally like approved, if, if you want to use that word or accepted in the medical community, uh, then doctors, doctors, clinicians, uh, practitioners um, have to trade carefully, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, we have these events, we have our content, we have uh, on social media, you know, more and more people are, are spreading the word, uh, the science is continually, continuously um, improving, uh, proving that it is effective. Um, so I'm sure it's just a matter of time before there is a lot more buy-in and a lot more support. Um, that is fascinating though about those experiments because it's interesting. It actually came up twice in, in interviews I had. Um, one was with Nova Thor. We were, we were talking about, you know, their, their bed. Well, it was with Thor and we were talking about the Nova Thor bed product. And they were talking about how, yeah, they are so, they put a lot of time into and resources into quality control, but also the engineering to make sure that they're getting not only a, a nice blend of light coverage, but the LEDs are putting out a consistent amount of energy, not just per session, but over time, over years, because you've got to remember yeah. That Novathor product is used, you know, hours, multiple hours every single day, um, and it's something I know someone years ago asked me about, and I, I sort of dismissed it. But maybe I'll have to do some more testing just just to see what happens, not only 
in a session, like maybe leave it panel running for 30 minutes and see if there is a drop off. But yeah, maybe leave it. Maybe I should test my panels that I've been using for years to see if they're still putting out the same numbers as they were uh, on day one. Um, so yeah, watch the space. Maybe I'll have to do my own experiments. But definitely, yeah. if you can pull up a bit more information on that and include it in the blog, I think that'll be really good because yeah. I'll, I'll be keen to check it out. And, and hey, if the work's already done, it, it saves me a lot of a time and experimentation as well. So yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, well, yeah, I want to touch on some of the products and the interviews that I did, but before I do that, was there anything else you wanted to share from the medical research uh, presentation side of things? Yeah, there were many interesting things. I won't go into that because you can talk about it very long, like a two hour pre presentation on, uh, on, on uh, photobiomodulation for dentistry, for instance, which one, which was one of the opening talks by the chair of the PBM 2024. Uh, there was a really, there was a really interesting uh, presentation on aesthetics or skin beauty, in combination with plastical surgery and the whole, whole host of other things on how, uh, yeah, a woman uh, really revamped her entire looks with uh, retinal therapy and a combination with all kinds of other tools. But yeah. Um, you can talk for days about this topic, basically. Well, what about like practical takeaways for those listening, you know, those who, who don't have um, time to listen to these presentations or maybe they won't even have time to read your full uh, blog, though I know you do a really good job of putting in, you know, key takeaways and summaries. But yeah, for those who are just short on time, were there any like key practical takeaways that uh, arose from the presentations? You know, was there something like, hey, we've we've finally figured out that this particular wavelength is really good for this problem or hey we've finally figured out that for skin we only need x amount of joules over centimeter squared were there any real big like key takeaways that came came out of the weekend i think um and it's a little bit of a thing that people don't want to hear but it's i think that it's that it's even more complicated than uh, when i got into the uh, into the <laughs> into the conference and that there's more complexity instead of less than I assumed and uh, yeah but also yeah you you of course uh, interviewed Dr. Hamblin Professor Hamblin and, and that interview will be out in the future as well and if you want a key takeaway in my opinion then is just just use the red light therapy um, get, a, get a reasonable dose test what it, it, go by how, how you feel if it's too high uh, and, and you don't, and you feel the results dropping off. You do less of it. If if it's too low, you slowly build up until you get to a sweet spot. That is, I think, if you want a really simple takeaway uh, from the conference, that is the 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 best one. I think. Yeah, it's. I kind of knew. I, I had a feeling you were going to say that that there was like yeah. a, no big um, game changing protocol or, or uh, you know we're, we've cracked it. We've figured something out because like you. The more people I spoke to, the more I realized, yeah, we're we're not going backwards, but we just <laughs> there's just so much we don't know. Um, I mean, even mechanisms of action, you know, that's yeah, there's still so much uncertainty around that. Um, which is, yeah, I mean, it's it's exciting because this is such a big space, but it's frustrating at the same time. I think for me as a reviewer, I think the key takeaway from all of this is i probably need to tone down the um positivity i have around these new um panels for instance that have the inbuilt programs you know like all these different programs mapped out it's like look we have researchers who have been doing this for years like this is literally their life um and they don't know right so yeah. to have a product that's been on the market for a couple of years or a couple of months even um and it's like hey it's got all these different modes in it it's like yeah how beneficial are they really now of course we do know i mean you have an excellent article on docent and we do know that uh there are some general rules you know when it comes to intensity and specific wavelengths and penetration and what works best for different scenarios so so there are some takeaways yeah so it's it's not all we're not totally flying blind but um that was the key thing i i think i picked up on when you're talking to someone who literally been in the field for 30 or 40 years and i'm like yeah we, we still don't quite know it's like oh wow so uh but you you yeah. mentioned uh professor hamlin and yeah that was 
a really cool interview. It was the last interview I did. Um, we'll talk about interviews soon, but yeah, it was it was definitely a standout. And I, I kind of, I was rather encouraged by his takeaways because it yeah. did resonate a lot with my feelings uh, and thoughts on on the space. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll come back to that. So. Look, uh, I thank you, Bart, for all the hard work and all those hours you spent uh, listening to these uh, professors and doctors and, and PhD candidates and whatnot. Um, I, I went to one and I, I left halfway in because I thought uh, this is a little bit too slow for me. And some of the terms were just over my head and I thought I'm better off out on the exhibition floor. So, yeah, thank you for, for grinding through some of those conversation, uh, those presentations. And I, I really look forward to seeing the blogs vlog um, that you you put out in time. Uh, saying that, the, the video will probably go at the same time as the blog, so links will all be down below. Now, I want to touch on uh, where, where, what have we got here? I want to touch on some products, interesting new products and product updates. So, uh, I'll run through a few things that I encountered, and um, a few of these companies were we've known about for years i've reviewed uh reviewed their products in the past but they came up with new pro uh, new generation um they've, they've just released new generation lines so um we'll touch on them but first there was a, a few companies i've never heard of so uh first the first one was photizio photizio photozio oh my gosh i don't even know how to say it uh, i'll put a link down below it was a south african company handheld device yeah i mean i when i first saw it i thought okay cool this is it's a nice form factor um, and they had four or five different models, like a sport model and a beauty model, a, a veterinary model. And I was like, oh, this is cool. But I thought they were going to be unique in terms of wavelengths and, and power dosage and whatnot. But it wasn't. They were all exactly the same. It was just a software setting inside. So I was, I was kind of surprised by that because I'm like, please don't tell me you're, try, you're, you're, you're telling people to set, uh, buy every single model for every single need. But fortunately, that wasn't the case. But I did a quick interview with those guys. Um, look, um, price-wise, I thought it was rather expensive for what it was. But still, I mean, apparently they're, they're getting some good results. So that was the first company. Uh, another company was called SunPower LED. Now, I also interviewed uh, their CEO, Tom, um, a very fascinating guy. And I really like their products. If you look at the school of thought around dosing and penetration and power output, some people were uh, very on one side where it's like, look, you don't need much at all. And then there's others who are like, the more, the better. You know, think think uh, Ironforge Chroma, you know, which is like max power and stuff. I'd say Tom and SunPower LED is more in that camp because he had some really high powered units. Um, but he's like an engineer, right? And he's he's designed all his products himself, and uh, they were really really cool. I, I did like them, uh, especially for first generation products. I mean, already it's like, well, it's ticking a lot of boxes. Um, I won't go into too much details. You can check out the their company website down below, uh, or just hang around for that interview because it was quite fascinating. But yeah, they have a, a helmet of sorts. Um, it's wired in, and they have a, a wired in panel. Um, which is meant to be very high powered. So I may even look at getting one of those to test because, um, yeah, it's it was cool. Um, another company, first time I, I heard about them was Hulite. Now this is, it's a UK-based company, um, but they do have, I'm a little bit confused. I, I, some of their products they ship internationally, other, pro uh, other products they have, resellers in, in um the states and and australia for instance so go on their website and um you may have to go off to another website but anyway they had a bed uh and this bed was putting out it's it's interesting when you first see it it looks yellow like a lot of amber light it was 585 i think it was it was also green in there red and the infrared i think there was some 940 i believe um but what was interesting it was it had the Nogia frequencies built in um, and it had quite a nice little interface. So rather than just turning on one of these red light therapy beds and, you know, just getting your 660 and 850 for 10, 20 minutes, there was a lot of cu customization you could do here. Now the Nogia frequencies, I know Scott Kennedy from Light Pass LED he was a big fan of them and him and I have talked about that in, in previous uh, videos. I personally, I, it's something I don't know enough about. Um, I haven't really used them, so I can't really comment. Uh, but hey, look, if you're looking, if you're a clinic and you want to tap into all of this sort of stuff, then it's going to be a great uh, product for you. They also had a product that I 
I'm going to review because I've never seen this before. It was called PBM Breast. And it's literally like a pad designed to go over the chest or the breasts. Um, so they were using, uh, they were marketing this for females, obviously, uh, suffering from mastitis, um, you know, inflammation, uh, breastfeeding. You see a lot of breastfeeding. Um, patients are using it, tenderness, or all of those sort of things. So uh, I'd never seen it before. And they were real, it was a really nice product. So their products are all coming from Korea. Uh, and you can tell like a lot of thought has gone into design. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for some reviews um, with those products. I didn't do an interview with them, but I uh, did speak to them at length. So, so that was cool. Uh, I had a good conversation with the guys from Thor and I actually had my first uh, session with a Nova Thor bed. This is the, the super famous uh, $120,000 bed. Uh, first time using it. So that was cool. The first thing I noticed, I, I didn't realize this, but the bottom of the bed is, is curved. Uh, a lot of the beds I have looked at or used are flat. Uh, it makes sense because, yeah, you're getting a lot more uh, coverage treatment area, you know, in, in terms of an even blend of light. Uh, and it's actually quite comfortable in there. And, yes, yeah, so I did a full 20-minute session. Um, surprisingly, didn't fall asleep. Uh, may have even got a little bit bored towards the end, uh, but it was nice. And this was done on the Friday. Yeah, it was a Friday, and I was pretty exhausted to be honest. And I have to say, after that, um, I was still doing interviews at eight thirty at night. Um, so yeah, it definitely uh, energized me to get through the day. So, excuse me, that was really really cool. Who else? Uh, Neuronic, the guys, the boys from Neuronic were there. Nothing really new on uh, from them, uh, but I will be doing an interview uh, with one of their co-founders very soon. So we'll go through a bit of an update. Power Medic. Now, this was another company that uh, their founder, Ani, he has been in the space for, I think it was 42 years. So as soon as I heard that, I was like, hey, I need to interview you because you're going to have some stories, right? So he has a laser product or laser product. Um obviously very high powered, uh, smaller treatment areas. And he's an engineer, electrical engineer, designer, and really, really nice products. Like you can tell he, he's just thought about um, practical, uh, how people use them, right? So for instance, um, the near-infrared de device, which is commonly used in clinics. So he's selling these to practitioners. You can buy them as an end user though. Um, but clinics are using them on you know joints, for instance. And of course, it's putting out invisible near infrared light. And yes, there's a bit of a, of a heat effect, a bit of a warming effect, but nothing major. So what he's built into the product is a slight little uh, tactile vibration sensation. So when it's on the joint, you just feel a very faint little tingling. And it's quite nice. It's, just, it's not meant to be therapeutic or anything like that, but it just shows both the practitioner and the patient that, hey, yeah, something's happening. Um, Again, it's just, you can tell he uses the product and has talked to people using them and figured out, hey, what needs improvement? And I like that because that's what I do in reviews, right? It's like, hey, it needs this. Well, why did they do it this way? So that was kind of cool. Uh, but he has some really cool stories with his products as well, especially around fertility. I won't get into it now because, again, I did a full interview with him. Um, and that will be up soon. Uh, what else was there? So the crazy thing is, I probably only saw half the stands. Now, that was was rather disappointing because I'm like, gosh, I, I went there to check out all these products and talk to all of these companies and I only, I only spoke to about half of them. And that was simply because I had to leave on the Sunday morning. Um, I wanted to get back home for my son's first day at school. So I always knew that was going to be the case and I had to try to do a lot or wanted to do a lot of interviews as well. So there were a lot of other companies, maybe, but you will touch on some of them uh, in the blog article. You may have spoke to companies that I didn't speak to um but some of the companies that I a lot of the I noticed there were quite a few companies with animal products or like products specifically to be used for animals so that's kind of cool uh, it's still an area I haven't really tapped into yet content wise so we'll have to do that and also a lot of brain health products like Alzheimer's uh, cognitive function uh again this event wasn't a consumer event. It wasn't targeted towards, you know, the biohackers or the the soccer moms who were just looking for a bit of an energy boost. 
this was targeted towards the scientific scientific medical community and also those um, practitioners, for instance, physiotherapists who want to utilize some of these products. So um, there were some products there that, you know, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars to purchase. Um, so I wasn't, it wasn't top of my list uh, to check them out um, because I knew a lot of my viewers, uh, it wouldn't really interest them. So next time I go though, I'll make sure I have all the time in the world and, and check everything out. What else have I got here? But do, were there any interesting new product? Oh, there was one other, sorry, V-Light. Uh, I sat down with them, good conversation. Uh, and I had to play with their new fourth gen duo, uh, the duo for you know, gen four. Now I literally just finished my review of the gen three like a week ago. Um, so of course they've already updated that, but yeah, we had to play around. We looked at the new features and I was impressed. Uh, the form factor is, has improved a lot, which was a downside with the gen three, a uh, much nicer, is more comfortable as well. Uh, nicer to use, easier to use, and they have added uh, extra LED cluster in there on the cerebellum down the back, so that's a nice little bonus because that was an add-on, so they've included that. I, I believe they've kept this price the same as well. So, yeah, that's my little update from the product side of things. Was there anything, Bart, that you wanted to touch on briefly uh, in terms of products or companies? First is, I also use the Novotar like you, and I've felt similar with the energy boost. I felt like I'm not drinking any coffee right now, but it's uh, after that Novotar, I felt like I had three or four cups of coffee. Also, because we're like, normally I'm, I am uh, always at natural sunlight or have lots of natural sunlight coming in. But at the events, there were there were LEDs for days on end, right? LEDs or fluorescent overhead lighting. So my vision was a little bit blurred. After I came out of Nova 4, surprisingly, everything looked much better. <laughs> it, it, it actually felt like my vision uh, felt better. And um, yeah, I, I had been sitting also from, from the airplane for a long time and uh, standing all day and uh, at the event, etc. So it was a transatlantic flight. And I had a little bit of a, how do you say that? Um, well, very small pain in the hip and in the lower back, but that was gone after the uh, after the session, which is interesting. I w yeah, I wish I had the time to do another session, but uh, it was really, really busy. And secondly, there's a company called uh, Symbix, and I interviewed the CEO, Wayne Marksman, and um, they have multiple products, but the two most consumer-facing products is a laser, for, uh, which is the PD care laser, which you use on the uh, on the abdomen on nine different points, and on, and on the uh, I think one point on the um, upper neck, and they have a helmet, uh, also transcranial, but then with a different uh, build as the V light, but they have a helmet for specifically for people with Parkinson's. And they have based the helmet on the research that is published. All the research is on their website. And um, so far, what I've seen, uh, yeah, when I interviewed the CEO, he, they have like 7,000 customers so far, and many of them are have positive results. It's like 70, after first use, it's like 70% positive results. And then if you don't get the results, you can get a, get a hop on a call with the, with the team, with the support team and they can help you find you in your routine. And then the number, I'm doing this from the top of the head, so don't hold me to the numbers, but it was around 90% uh, success rate with uh, that people subjectively feel better after using um, this helmet for Parkinson. And that can be anything. It can be your like your executive function in the brain. It can be your sleep, which is often inhibited by Parkinson. It can be motor uh, ability, um, but yeah. It was uh, very interesting, that, that product. Yeah, I, that's cool. And I'm so glad you got to interview you them because um, that was one that was next on my list in terms of the companies I wanted to check out. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to hear that conversation. What's really fascinating, like I literally left, left what are we, midday Monday. Okay, so um, I left uh, Sunday morning, right? Now, um, I wasn't on Facebook or anything during the weekend. But I checked Facebook this morning and there's all these ads for Simbix, like all through my feed. And I'm like, how did that happen? Because uh, it's just, 
I'd never noticed them before. So uh, I'll definitely check out. I'll wait for your to listen to your interview. And yeah, I may reach out and um, yeah, uh, get a product to review. I'd like to do a big comparison uh, between Neuronic, the V Light, the Symbex, uh, even the Mito Red Light Mito Mind. I've just done my review on that. By the way, if you're enjoying all this content, um, hit the like button. We really appreciate it. If you've got a question for myself or Bart, leave it down below. And yeah, be sure to subscribe. It takes you like a second or two. Uh, I do a bunch of product reviews, as you've probably guessed, uh, product comparisons. We do regular relate therapy news videos, um, heaps of interviews. We have so many interviews coming out, both myself and Bart, uh, with some amazing people in the field. So, uh, yeah, like here's my little plug. Um, hit the like, subscribe, and all that cool stuff. Now, um, yeah, so that's something I may have to look at doing. I was going to do a comparison with the three of them, but yeah, it'd be good to include some mix as well. Uh, so I will check that out. Now, um, let's talk about the interviews. I'll, I'll I'll do a quick rundown. I know I've already touched on a few of them, so I'll just do a quick rundown of the eight interviews I did. And uh, I know you did two, but so you can uh, share the... Oh, what was the other interview you did? Uh, you interviewed Simbex, and who was the other person you interviewed? Yeah, it was with Ton Thomas Bruineval. He's from Switzerland, and he has a, a PBM clinic. Uh, that's that's also what it's called. Let me double check. PBM clinic... Yeah, I think PBM clinic. No, okay. If you Google PBM clinic Switzerland, you should find it. And um, yeah, they have the latest um, four products and Nova Four. And um, he's from the regular standard medical field. Um, he was a head of his department in oncology, and then he used uh, photobiomodulation, and he found it worked so well that he gave up his entire life. I think he even sold his house and then he started this clinic and uh yeah to because he was so convinced that this would help people and now now he's now he's a, fi a few months in into building his business and it's it's running well of course but uh yeah he he needs a little bit of exposure and help and he's a true believer uh but it was very interesting to hear from him and uh yeah yeah that's cool i look forward to checking that out as well i did hear um good things about him so i'm glad you you were able to get an interview done. Okay, so the eight interviews I did. First up, there was the Fatizo company, the South African company, touched on that earlier. It was just a short little conversation. Uh, then there was Arnie from Power Medic. This is, uh, he's the guy that's been around in the space for 40 odd years. Talked about the differences between LEDs and lasers and why he likes lasers. Um, we talked about his pivot away from 900 nanometers. I think it was 940 into 808 big fan of 808 so that was quite interesting i uh, talked about red light therapy and fertility and all the success he's had uh we looked at his whole product lineup is some really really cool products are uh, really nice like i touched on some of the benefits earlier and also some of the history of the space more around lasers uh but obviously there's a lot of crossover with laser well i mean lasers were pbm well pbm didn't exist i guess when when it was back 40 years ago, PBM is actually, photobiomodulation is actually a relatively new term. Um, and it, and Professor Hamlin did a really good job of explaining all of that. So uh, yeah, that was my interview with Power Medic, Arnie from Power Medic. Check that out uh, when it's published. I then spoke to Josh. Uh, he works at Thor. Uh, he'd been, he's been with the company for eight years. And it was funny, I'd, I'd never met him. I, I've I know the Thor guys really well. They're always at the conferences we go to uh, in the biohacking wellness space. Um, but I'd ne never met Josh. So we just got chatting. And after about 15, 20 minutes, I thought, man, I, I should have been recording this because it's really good. So I came back later and said, hey, look, let's just have that same conversation again. Uh, so he, he did a really good job of explaining the differences in the beds, the red light therapy beds. Now, of course, who's going to be biased and, and that's... Uh, you know, he's going to promote his his company or well, the company he works for but yeah he, he has some really good reasons as to why thor do what they do and of course have the price tag because they um yeah they do a lot of work on ensuring you're getting great blend of light quality control and that it can be used for eight ten hours a day every single day so that was cool we also talked about uh why they use 660 and 850 um importance of getting a nice blend of light naturally how difficult that is and a few other things so 
that would be good because I've, I've interviewed James Carroll, the CEO and founder of uh, Thor, a few times. So it was good to hear from someone else from the company. Uh, then I interviewed Tom, now I forget his last name right now. Uh, he was the founder, CEO and founder of Solar Sun LED. Really great guy. Like I, I sat listening to him for about an hour and a half before I did an interview. And pretty much within 10 minutes, I thought, yeah, I need to interview this guy. So I sat there waiting to get an opportunity to interview him. But he just had story after story after story. And uh, yeah, I didn't think we started interviewing until 8 p.m. on a Friday night. And they literally turned off the lights like towards the end of the interview because it was so late. But yeah, very passionate guy, very knowledgeable, knew his stuff. Um, We talked about the differences between LEDs and lasers. Uh, and he had a very different opinion to um, Arnie from Power Medic. Uh, we talked about pulsing and his thoughts on that. Uh, contact versus non-contact use, very fascinating. His thoughts aligned a lot with mine as well. Um, some of his penetration experiments. Uh, so I've done penetration experiments with bones. Uh, he's done a lot with meat, uh, pork, uh, chicken breasts, all sorts of different types of meat. And um, he did a lot more, let's say, scientifically than I. Like he used the proper uh, light measuring sphere and uh, a lot more precise instruments and um, had some fascinating results. So, yep, you want to learn more about that. And he also had some really cool case studies. So very cool interview. I can't wait to get that one up. Uh, The next day, I interviewed Austin from V-Light. Again, I'd interviewed Dr. Lou Lim before, the CEO and founder of V-Light. Uh, so it was good to hear from someone else. And we talked about the new Gen 4 products. We talked about the difference between V-Light products and Red Light Therapy Panel, because I get that question a lot. Talked about the default brain network, which is what they're targeting. Uh, the unique benefits of intranasal PBM delivery that's shining light up through the nose. Uh, and which headset is best for you, because they do have quite a sometimes confusing uh, product <laughs> lineup. Uh, who else did I interview? Um, Aaron from Kenyon. Now he's their product. Uh, he's sorry. He's their research lead there. Very, very knowledgeable. Uh, that was probably a, an interview that you may have been better off doing, but because this guy knew his stuff. Um, so we talked about lasers versus LEDs again. Very interesting. because There's a lot of different, uh, differing opinions on that. Um, how red light shined, uh, shining into the gut can have a big influence on the brain and the science around that. Uh, the downsides of overdoing red light. And I, I pushed him hard on this, I pushed him really hard. So I didn't make him uncomfortable, but it's, I, I, I wasn't having to go at him or anything like that. I just knew, I just know he knew his stuff and I'm like, I want to get a clear answer here. So, um, definitely, uh, you definitely want to watch that. Um, and yeah, some insights about some exclusive insights about Kenyon's new products uh, that are due out later this year. So, Definitely uh, check that one out. Who else did I interview? Oh, Sarah from Sarah Thrive. So her product, uh, the Sarah Thrive, is now shipping. I should be getting one in a week or two. I'll start doing a review on it later in the year. Uh, we looked at PBM in the brain. That's a big uh, area of expertise that Sarah has. Safety issues of red light therapy on the brain. Uh, the latest research on PBM mechanisms, red light therapy mechanisms, light penetration in fat tissue. Um, the latest on a device and a course that she's uh, involved in that's running later on in the year. And then finally, the final one to be you, I did uh, late Saturday evening, I think it was 5.30 uh, before the dinner, an, an hour later, was with Professor uh, uh, Michael Hamlin. So this was a, a big win. Um, you know, he's, he's well known in the space. I'm sure many of you watching have heard, uh, have either heard of him in an interview or a podcast, or read some of his work, or maybe indirectly have read his work. It's often quoted on a company's website, and he's also involved in advising a lot of popular red light therapy companies as well. So uh, yeah, he's all over the space. So it was really cool to sit down with him, quite a fascinating guy. Now, we talked about the history of PBM, photobiomodulation, but referred to some of his uh, viewpoints early on in this video. We talked about um, contact and non-contact um, application again. Very fascinating. Uh, dosing, the biphasic uh, dose response curve and uh, finding the sweet spot. We talked about uh, potential downsides, what they could look like. We talked about wavelengths, 668, 50 and, and 
do we need these other wavelengths that a lot of products are putting out? Um, hyper responded, all sorts of cool things. So that was a great conversation. I feel like it could have gone for hours, but um, I had asked for a 15 minute conversation and I was conscious that we all had to have a bit of a break before the big dinner. So lots of amazing content all done in one and a half days. Literally, it was Friday afternoon and Saturday. I got eight interviews done. Um, so yeah, I'll be, we'll be pushing them out. Maybe we, we're going to do one a week, but the thing is we have so many interviews now, we may do one and a half. Speaking of our interviews, we have recently set up a, a podcast. So all of these interviews and the old ones are now on, on your favorite podcast platform. So if you'd rather listen to the interviews on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, um, you should find me over there or us over there. Just search for Alex Fergus or Light Therapy Insiders. Uh, we're only putting the interviews in podcast format format for obvious reasons. Uh, a review is not really uh, suitable for a podcast. So jump on YouTube for the re reviews. And the interviews are still going to be here on YouTube, but they'll also be on podcast as well. So that was everyone. Oh, and then I have an interview booked in for later this week with uh, Liam from Neuronix. So not too sure what we'll be talking about. Um, maybe some highlights from the event, especially um, around their research and their products. So the brain side of things. Um, but yeah, so yeah, those were those were all the interviews. It was um, it was a lot. It was, it was cool. And I, I look forward to getting them all out and hearing your feedback. All right. So before we wrap this up, I just thought um, share some highlights. Uh, what was your, um, I mean... What was your, your favorite thing uh, about the, the weekend? Uh, first of all, it was a lot of fun. Uh, also very busy because the days were very long, but in a good way, uh, I think. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still going to going to come back to that point that I made earlier, uh, that the rabbit hole goes very deep. There's tons, tons and tons of science on this topic, but on the other hand, um, we cannot be 100% clear about even the most basic things. And I think... Yeah, I also go about that in my dosing blog a little bit, uh, my second dosing blog, because we're like complex biological organisms with every part interacting with another part. So it's not like a simple mechanistic um, ball that you throw that you can very easily analyze. But in the human body, there are so many moving parts that all influence each other that I doubt that, well, there will be simpler answers probably in time, but whether we fully completely understand it ever uh, that's a question of mine and yeah secondly um, I think we should come in, keep coming back to these events because they're very very helpful and they they do make you aware of what's been published on on different pub, uh, topics whether it's eye health dental health uh, muscle recovery neurology whatever you think there's always a new angle or new insights or new uh, paper that has been published that you don't know about. Plus the invaluable opportunity to talk to the researchers themselves, which is just as important, I think. And um, which, yeah, helps you learn some new stuff because sometimes in private conversation, you learn something very different than, well, or at least from a very new angle than what they uh, be published or you can learn about what they're currently working on which hasn't been published before yes 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 well said um and i'll just share my my highlights and thoughts uh firstly i mean it was amazing because we've been to a lot of you know we were recently at the health optimization event uh where you have i don't know 50 exhibitors maybe more maybe it's closer to 100 now thousands of people but it's all health and wellness so we're, we're kind of walking around looking for the red light therapy related products and companies or the people there right but this was like it's all red light therapy i mean it was it was amazing in a way um so it was it was really cool uh to go to an event like that um and yeah we'll, we'll definitely be going back uh i wanted to say thanks to all the people that came up and, and said hi uh, i know a lot of you are probably watching this so yeah thank you it was nice having conversations and i did i really do appreciate just the quick hi and and you know good job or like i love your videos i mean it means a lot uh, we don't get to interact with you guys very often, if at all. So um, it was nice. It was nice to have that opportunity and just to hear that feedback. I know when I was doing some interviews, there were people standing, uh, watching and listening. So I kind of had a live audience, which was kind of neat. 
Uh, and then those, some of those people came up to me later on and said, oh, wow, that was a great, great conversation. So that was, that was nice. Um, I also wanted to say it was a really good event. Like it was, you know, the food, everything was, we were well looked after. I mean, it was intense. Some of those presentations were long, I know, and the days were long, but that that's usually the case with these conferences, especially if you're there working, you know, and, and you're trying to get as much out of it. But yeah, overall the event was, it was in a lovely location everything was well done um and it was a shame i couldn't be there for the last day so heads off to the team uh you know james carroll obviously he him and i um you know he, he did a lot of work getting me to to attend i mean it was a bit of a no-brainer but I, I know he was heavily involved in the organization as well so that was correct i also wanted to talk about the organization so this was put on by walt a world association of laser therapy now a lot of people as I think like red light therapy, photopolymerization is a new thing, you know, like, oh, is this some new fad or anything like that? And it's like, no, that was their 30th year running this conference. Uh, they do it every second year. So they've done 15 of these conferences, 30 years. I mean, just, just stop and think about that for a while. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of papers on PBM, red light therapy, low level laser therapy, cold laser therapy, whatever term you want to call it, thousands of papers. Uh, we have James Carroll who's been in this space for 30 odd years. We have Arnie from Palomedic, 42 years. Like this is legit. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I, I've known that, but I just want to reinforce that point. And I think going to an event that has that much history, like it was their 30th anniversary. So they had a, a prize ceremony, award ceremony where they gave out a little trophy to all of the, um, what do they call them? Principals, the, the key chairman. I can't remember, can't remember the term. But yeah, it went all the way back uh, to the 1990s, I think it was. And um, it's, it's kind of like, wow. Like, well, I mean, you and I, Bart, have been in this space for a couple of years now, five, six, seven years maybe. Um, but we're still, you know, we're, we're the young ones. We're still new to the scene. Like it's Professor Hamlin, for instance. I mean, he's retired now um, and he's been doing it for a long time. So that was cool. And it was cool seeing that and seeing the community and seeing those friendships that are well and truly established um and and being you know welcomed into it i mean we were invited to sit at the thor table for instance uh which was you know it's it's very special because Thor, big company a lot of research a lot of involvement in research and and these events so that was really nice um and yeah i just i just wanted to share that it was definitely a, a wow moment for me just seeing that firsthand and just speaking to some people there you know there's there's some amazing stuff happening Yes, in the research field, but even like experimental, uh, maybe that's the wrong word. Uh, for instance, I met a guy who specializes in um, stem cell treatments, PRP. Uh, he was, his specialty was more around uh, imaging, uh, neurodegenerative imaging, I think that's what it was. And then he's tapped into these other treatments, right? And so what he's doing is using real-time uh, imaging to, to put stem cells into these like, you know, um herniated discs and ruptured tendons but now he's incorporating pbm into the process because pbm is an indication that it can help with the um regrowth and you know uh, uptake of the stem cells and whatnot so he's using that and like so he's he's going deep into the pbm side of things for his clinic and that's why he was at this event to just learn more about it uh we had like a midwife there so she was at that event just trying to learn how she can take this technology and what products to use and, and help her patients so really really cool stuff um but i think the biggest highlight of course was you know seeing you Bart, and seeing lisa having everyone together because it's always fun um for those that don't know Bart's being my right hand man the the brains behind the company and uh, a lot of the content we put out for many years so we all work remotely so it is really cool to, to be up in person and lisa is running the facebook page and uh running my emails now as well so it's really cool to have everyone there we did go to the gala and we, we all got dressed up and had a real fun night so um yeah that was definitely a, a, a good standout so anyway i think that's everything i we've already been going 50 minutes so wow so i hope you guys enjoyed this i thought it would be a good idea there was just so so much information so many conversations i thought it would be good to do a wrap up and just push this out and uh hopefully you guys found this interesting and yeah, happy to answer any questions and be sure to check out that blog article over at Light Therapy Insiders because you don't need to read all of it. You can just skim through and find this section, the section, the paper, the product that interests you. Um, but that will, that will all be down below. 
And yeah, stay tuned until some of those interviews start uh, being published on YouTube. All right, but well, I'll let you pack up and head off to the airport and we will um, see you at the next one. Cool. All right, thanks guys. And uh, be sure to check out this next video, which is, I don't know what side it's on. This is a different camera I'm using, but it will be up on the screen somewhere so you can uh, check out some more content. All right, signing off.